I'm Jono Buchanan. Now, if you've watched this channel with any regularity, you will know that I'm a big fan of Logic's auto filter. It sounds really good. The envelope shaping's really good. The LFO shaping's really good. It's got distortions built into it. It's a really powerful plugin. And what we're gonna do today is to go a little bit further with its LFO to begin to discover that it is capable of doing some really interesting things when it comes to movement within sounds. If that sounds like your bag, then stay with me. We're gonna start with this Cave Shaker beat. And in its original form, I can't really take too much of this, but it's important that I introduce you to this rhythm. Try not to have your ear drawn too much towards the shaker of the Cave Shaker beat. Too late, it's all you can hear, isn't it? Yeah, okay, don't worry. It's not gonna stay like that for very long. Okay, what I'm gonna do is to put on top of this beat loop uh, the auto filter. Of course, I've been playing with it, so it's in my most recent list, but as you will know by now, the filter section is down here within Logic's own plugins, and the auto filter's right up at the top of it. So here we go. Now, I've already mentioned that what I'm interested in doing is getting movement into this sound, and there are lots of ways in which that's possible within the auto filter, but we're gonna be focusing on the LFO today. So I'm gonna turn off the envelope. Thank you, envelope, but not today. And what I'm gonna do instead is to turn up the LFO. And what that does is it begins to introduce movement from this module into the cutoff frequency. In other words, what we get is this shape, the shape of my choice, applied to the cutoff frequency, and the LFO is going to determine how much that happens. Now, I'm actually gonna start with a down ramp. I want the effect that we're going to be driving for today to be really straightforward and really obvious, so I'm gonna start with a down ramp. And because that is going to be clocked to one bar, what that means is that we're gonna get bright going dull every bar. <laughs> And the higher I put the cutoff frequency, the more of the shaker we get and it lasts and then of course it filters out. And it's up to me to determine the point at which I can tolerate the amount of shaker before it then submerges into the bit of the beat loop that I quite like, this little kind of insistent, quite progressive, pitchy little thing that's happening. Pitchy, there's a new word, always making up words. Okay, so what we know, because we've seen it before, is this sets the amount of the LFO, this sets the speed, this sets the shape, and this is my central cutoff frequency. But what we've never explored before is the idea that what we can do is to mess around with the phase of this shape. Now, what does that mean? Well, at the moment, the phase is at 180 degrees. If I take that down by 90 degrees to just 90 degrees, this happens. <laughs> So what's happening is we still get our down ramp, but it's offset by 90 degrees or otherwise known as one beat. Why is it one beat? Well, it's one quarter of one bar. So we still got our down ramp, but now what we get is this kind of backbeat effect because the down ramp is starting a whole beat later than it was before. Stands to reason that if I take this down to zero degrees, it's going to be two beats late. And if I also want that backbeat effect, but I want it to happen on beat four, then I could make the sync phase minus 90 degrees. And now the down ramp is going to start its cycle at beat four. And that's all really nice. So it gives me a chance to choose one of these shapes and then to basically offset exactly where it begins. And of course, the same thing would be true if I, let's say, selected the up ramp. Again, what's gonna happen is that it's gonna be out of phase by one whole beat.
So that ramp now starts on beat four and climbs and then abruptly stops on beat four before starting all over again. Okay, let's go back to our down ramp. Oh, by the way, while we're here, let's also uh, just quickly uh, look at the kind of sawtoothy version of this. So again, we get the apex of that happening on beat four. And again, if we wanted that to happen on beat two instead, we now know that we could come back to a sync phase of 90 degrees. I should learn to finish a sentence before I press play. So there it is starting its cycle again at beat two. Okay, so we know about that. Fine, now then, let's turn that off for a moment. So we're back to where we started. And now let's look at stereo phase. Now what this is going to do, it's gonna decouple the signal again in exactly the same way as it did a moment ago. But this time, rather than the shape of the filter changing in terms of offsets, what we're now doing is we're going to split the signal between the left and the right speakers. And the stereo phase is going to start the shape that I select here late in one speaker. So the down ramp is starting on beat four in this speaker, and it's starting on beat one in this speaker. Again, what I can do is to swap that around. So if I decided I want it to happen on a different beat of the bar, I can select a different stereo phase amount. And it also sort of stands to reason, therefore, that instead of just thinking about these in units of 90 degrees, what I could try and do would be to sort of get in the gap a little bit. Okay, so ideally what I want this to be is minus 45 degrees, but I can't do that. But what that should mean at minus 40 is that I'm more or less in a gap between two quarter note beats. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? So of course, if we choose the square wave, because there is nothing in the waveform in the gaps between hard left and hard right, it just jumps. The moment I select the sawtooth wave here, what we get is movement through the middle. And of course, we're getting movement through the middle if I choose either of the ramps as well. And this random square wave will do what the square wave does, but it will do it randomly. But because it's going to jump, so in other words, rather than just jumping neatly from left to right, it will jump to intermediate positions. But I really like a clock speed of a bar, and so that's going to not sound particularly great, I don't think. So it's interesting, we get these random little spikes, but if I want this to kind of be the core beat within my track, probably not quite so much. I'm gonna come back to a waveform of just one bar, or at least I'm gonna stick with one bar, but I'm gonna come back to a waveform which passes this sound through the middle. And what we're then gonna do is to apply exactly this idea to another sound which has got a different clock speed. So what I'm going to do now is to mute the original beat loop and here is a synth part which is a little arpeggiated sequence and in fact already I've set up the auto filter here and what we've got this time is two bars using the same shape that's moving through the middle but with offset stereo phase and sync phase 
and that's going to be interesting in its own right. But this time, what I've also done is to select the high pass filter rather than the low pass. If that's all loads of information all at once, that's fine. Let's listen to the original version of this sound and then I'll punch in the filter. So this is what it sounds like with no filtering. Okay, and with the filter. That's all quite nice. Now, of course, because it's clocked to two bars and because we have a waveform which is predictably opening and closing over that amount of time, that rate, if you like, even though we've got variation coming in this sound because I've automated alchemy, which is the sound that's actually playing this part so that we've actually got movement in terms of how long the notes last, that kind of thing. Nevertheless, we could also have some extra filter movement. In other words, if I play with the cutoff frequency, I think that's gonna be quite nice too. It is quite nice. I think it'd be even nicer with the beat loop at the same time. So remember, what we've got here isn't just LFO movement that's coming up and down. What we've now got is the sequence that's actually being played being offset between the left and right channels. And what we've done is to slightly warp that shape so that rather than peaking and troughing at the beginning of each bar, we've got an offset, which basically means that its shape is doing crazy things within those individual bars. And all of this becomes even more interesting when we put in other kit elements. So what I've now got within this mix is we're going to have a kick drum on this channel here. I've got a bass line here and the kick is side chaining a compressor on that sound. What I've also got is all of the movement that we've just talked about here as well and I've put a compressor on this sound as well and again the kick is going to just provide a little bit of dynamics control over that and what I'm also going to do is to put in a compressor here so the kick channel is going to be hitting the dynamics of all of the other sounds within the mix but the crucial thing is that with the exception of the bass, the loop and our little modular Berlin sound are getting this kind of interesting LFO warpy stuff happening. Again, time to stop talking and press play.
you still here? I got lost there for a moment, it's fair to say. There are so many parameters that we can play with. You can see that I'm adjusting a few things at once. I just don't have enough mice to uh, sort of <laughs> control all of these things at the same time. But all of these parameters are automatable. So I could draw in different sync phases, different stereo phases, different amounts of stereo spread for the filter, different cutoff amounts. I can even vary the filter shape if I want to. So rather than it just always being this high pass model that we're using at the moment, we're going into different places as well. So I think as an addition to all of the ways in which the auto filter can work, the LFO kind of stereo phasey, synky phasey options are a really interesting extra addition. And of course you can apply them to as many sounds as you like. Chaos, let's bring it.